Welcome back to the sound for more channel and welcome back to another tutorial and demonstration. Today I'm starting a new series of tutorials on Woodpecker. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Additionally, if you like what I do and the content I post on the channel, please consider supporting the channel following again the instruction contained in each video description. Thank you again. So, Woodpecker, it's a, a sequencer, MIDI sequencer, a new one. As you can see, we are inside the AUM. So I have an audio channel with Piano Tech 8 and I have a Woodpecker here as a MIDI processor and the four inside the MIDI channel called the MIDI 1. We connect the two, so we click here on the left hand side as we normally do in AUM. And let's click here to um, connect Woodpecker as a MIDI processor into Piano Tech 8. You can see I have also an external keyboard which is connected just for convenience so I can play some notes uh, on Piano Tech, like so. Okay, so let's open uh, Woodpecker again. So it's a four layers um, MIDI sequencer to start with. You can see the layers are here and they are uh, distinguished by color. You can see this blue one. We can go to the second one here, which is green. And you can see also the volume here, cha um, graphics change into green. Then you have uh, this third one lighter blue and then this uh, fourth one magenta color. Okay, so uh, those are the four layers. So four layers and each um, layer can go up to 64 steps, which you will see. And also you have possibility to create variation. You can see there uh, the variation themselves. Here are the steps and you have different controls for different steps. And of course you can also scroll down here to reveal additional controls like uh, ratcheting, uh, um, step time delta, ratchet, ratcheting probability. But even more than that, you can also decide for each step to actually send control changes in terms of messaging, pitch changes, pressure, aftertouch, even starting or stopping other sequencer. And you have uh, four layers of those and also even going to variation, which you can define up here. So um, you have presets as you would expect. You click on presets here. You can save uh, one as default, reset default, or you can go to the factory. So let's click on the first one here. And let's give you first a sense of what it can do. So I'm going through some of the presets, okay? And you click start, and here it goes. Of course, if you want to check the output, double click here, create a new node, and load something like grand stuff. I find this very useful and connect the two, so you take the output from MIDI from Woodpecker and use it as a, a input into Grand Staff. You open Grand Staff and then you can see the notes um, which are coming out from Woodpecker. Oops, as you can see, um, it is not controlled by transport control, but that can be changed in the setting. Indeed, you can go to the setting here and you can say instead of starting manually, you can also wait for door transport. And in that case, it will do so. You activate it and then press play. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward. This tutorial is the first one, so just to give you a bit of an overview and introduction, then we go through in more detail so the different controls as we go through each tutorial in the series. You might be wondering which um, layers is actually running, and let's remove these and go back to manual because I prefer it. And um, of course, you can see the movement here. In terms of step, you can go to another layer and see if the steps are moving. But there is a better view to do that, a better way to do that. Click on run here, and you can see the one which are active. So the first two are active, they are on, and the other two layers are off. And again, you can also see them playing here. 
This view is also useful because you can see the number of bars as well. So it's a little bit better to have a complete uh, visual, okay, of what is running. But again, let's um, test some more preset. Let's click on next to go to the next one and let's click on start. Very interesting, but that is more for drum composition and acoustic because it can send also MIDI message out. So just remember that as well. So let's choose something more appropriate. Okay, let's go to the next one again. Really nice as preset. You can see how easy it is to mute and unmute the different layers and you can that gives you a sense of how the preset has been created which can be really useful and you see also these different colors which will come to those later on in the series because you can mute skip steps you can do a lot of different things <laughs> And of course, this is one instance of Woodpecker. Then you can have multiple instances as well, and the for each instance will have four layers. I always like to use a piano as an instrument because to learn is actually quite good, nice, simple instrument, which is very familiar and then you build from there of course you can add a different instrument like drums bass etc and and drive a full composition that's okay as you gain knowledge on how to use with Becca. You can notice on this one different veloc velocity or volume, as you can see here, they're being adjusted, right? And you can see here simulate, a simulation of uh, the volume going up and then coming down. So really nice. But okay, let's stop now. Let's go back to the default, reset to the default, which sounds like so. Now, if you go to run, you can see that only the first layer is active, which is good. So we worry only about the first layer to try to understand a little bit how it works. You can see it has 60, um, 16 steps. Um, here which is running how do you know they are 16 well you can see them running but if you go on setting here for the sequencer for the blue layer here it says number of note 16 okay and that is how you know they are 16. click start to play now you might decide to change that go to 16 here and go up and just say i want to use the first eight only so and click start so you can see he's stopping to uh step number eight we call we can also adjust the timing so let's go to one quarter for example so start 
Of course, that depends also on the bit per minute that is selected. You can activate DO, so it takes them from uh, it takes the bit per minute from DO or from media or top. So different options. Then how do you know, for example, which note is playing? Well, you can see them here. C4, as long as you have selected note here, because you have range as well. So C4, that is what is playing. Then it's going up by semitone. If I say this one, I set it to zero, um, you can listen what, what happens. Now let's stop it to um, four step like so. Okay, for simplicity. Okay. Okay, so those are the notes which are coming out, which we can check also here. Not constrained to scale, right? And of course, if I was to set them all to zero, like so, uh, of course, he's repeating that C4 note. Nice and simple, right? Here you have selected mute. So if I click here, okay, and I press start. So I muted that particular step. I click on it again and I am muted. I can also skip, so I can skip that step. Is red now. So he's playing this, step number one, skip number two, and going to three and four. So as you can see, it is very straightforward to use, but you can go even, you know, uh, wider than, than that. You can do things, let's set these to one eighth, so it's a little bit faster. And you can say, well, okay, I want to put some uh, um, random note probability Okay, perhaps on this step here, I set it high. How do you define the range of note probability? Here, yeah, on range. So it's pretty straightforward. Shall we change, for example, the volume on that particular note? There we are. We adjust it. And of course, this is just one layer, right? And of course, you scroll down. You can say, well, I would like to do some ratcheting on the step number four. Click here. And I do really like that you have the representation in notes instead of just a number. So that's really cool. So he's playing ratcheting notes here on step number four because that is what I selected, okay? And so it's really, really good. I can make it even faster. So that, that's really cool. You can change the timing of each step there as well. And there are additional settings here on the sequence, up here on the sequencer, oh yeah, where you can change the behavior of that. You can set the probability of the ratcheting. But as I said, this is just one layer. Then you can go to another layer and uh, start on this as well. So we could say, well, right, okay, so let's uh, set this one to uh, one quarter as well. Let's set it to maybe only two steps, okay? And then we go to, um, I don't know, we go up by uh, 12 semitones, like so, and uh, click uh, play. Oops, we forgot to activate it. Click on run and activate the second layer. Now, if we go to the note C4 there, we can go minus 12, so it goes to C3. So you lower it, right? Because this is relative. Let's go to the first layer and lower a little bit the volume here, like so, right?
Again, this is only two layers that are active that you can see here. And you can also have variation. You can actually click on the second variation, then you can create the second variation for that particular layer. And you have up to four layers, okay? So you can create some really complex um, composition, comp uh, really some interesting um, sequencing of notes. And then of course the beauty comes when then you set, for example, or you change a, dis a different, uh, different settings. You can set, for example, the MIDI channel out. And then if you have different uh, number of channel, you can draw a different instrument, for example, inside a UM. You have additional uh, or advanced settings, okay, which you can see here. You can even change the MIDI input channel and you can set it, for example, to wait for a note uh, before uh, the sequence start which is helpful because that means you can drive the sequencer through another sequencer or another application you can get it to restart and you can get it to restart on the first step for example you can do lots of different things you can limit the scale for example when you do variation gliding on uh, on notes uh, randomization Okay, you can do that um, as well, but you have also possibility to have audio in as a trigger as well, which is quite different compared to other sequences. So it has a lot as a sequencer. So in terms of why using it, I like the four layers. Not many have that, but some sequencers of course have tracks, but this is quite nice and simple to use uh, as a step sequencer as well. Your variation, okay, which is really good. And then for each step, you could also say start the sequence, and then you can say which layer you're going to start, okay, uh, like start the number uh, two, and then on uh, uh, you can stop that uh, sequence on uh, this step uh, here. You can start it here and then you stop it there from one layer to the other layer, in this case, I selected one, but it could have been the second one like so. So you can create some quite complex uh, setting, which you can't in other uh, sequence unless you're programming a lot in terms of uh, notes, but in some cases you can't, you can't at all. So yeah, it has its own uh, merit in terms uh, of uh, features that other sequencer don't really have so so easily accessible so i'm going to stop here for this first overview i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and um, see you next time bye